Welcome to Holmes Academy's Matrix 3D tutorial. In this tutorial, I'd like to talk about a few of the topics we're going to cover here in our short course at Holtz Academy. In particular, how matrix can be used in jewelry design and manufacturing processes. One of the things that sets GemVision Matrix apart from many other jewelry CAD programs is the abundance of useful builders built into the program, such as the custom ring rail tool, which I'm going to demonstrate this morning. In Matrix, there are simple builders and more advanced builders. To start out using the custom ring rail, we need to start with a couple simple builders, such as the ring rail, which I'll go to the tools menu here, turn on. This will bring up a screen down below. I can pan the screen up and down by grabbing on any of these bars and just dragging the right mouse button. I can then go to the ring rail section here and pick any letter of the alphabet I want, or I can even pick what uh, regional standard I want to use by just clicking on the type and setting region. And then to apply that size of ring, I simply click on the green arrow. So we'll start with a simple ring before we make it into a more complex ring. What I'll also do while I'm at it is I'll design around a stone. So I'll go to the gem loader in the gems menu. And this allows me to create any stone size and any stone shape I like very quickly. I can go through different tiers of sizes, larger or smaller. I could even jump back and forth between different sizes and switch them. For the sake of this exercise, I'm going to stick with a cushion shape, say maybe six and a half millimeters. Once I have that, I will move it up in space. I'll make sure the grid snap is on, not entirely different from Rhino. And I'll drag this. I can hold down shift to keep it straight until I move it into position. I'm dragging with the left mouse button. We use the left mouse button for movement and the right mouse button for navigation. All right, once I have that basic shape, I'm now going to go ahead and use a more advanced builder based upon the shapes I already have here, the shape I want to make. We'll find this in the tools menu again. It's called the custom rail, and it'll open up a screen down below, which I can drag up again to take a look at. Many of the matrix builders require information to work with before we can even start. In order to use this rail builder, we have to have an existing ring rail. But once we have that, we can set up a ring size reference, which will give us blue lines here. It may not be entirely visible, but you can kind of see it and blue lines the other way. So we have a size reference for the ring and a width reference. The reason why they do this is so we can actually lay out our lines accordingly. We have to start in this area between the blue lines and finish in that area between the blue lines on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll turn off the object snaps to make it easier and I'll use the interpolated curve here to draw my shape. Starting from here, now you can draw it as symmetrical or as asymmetrical as you like. If you try aiming to get it symmetrical, you're going to want to probably count squares. Otherwise, it's entirely up to you as to how wide or narrow you want to make this. So I'd say that'd do just fine. And I'll give me an initial shape. Once I'm ready to actually create this shape and create it in 3D, I just select it and go over here to make rail and click on it. It'll ask me if I want to get full as true up here. Just simply press enter. And this will give you my three-dimensional shape. Now we have the top and bottom shapes here. Uh, this is one way in which the way I do this is different from GenVision's standard method. And I find this is rather important to make sure the shape is going to be a clean when it's final, final result. So what I will do first is I'm going to actually take the top and bottom and reconcile them. I'll do so with the command in the curve menu in the third tier called Match. I'll select the end I want to match from and the target end I want to match to. And this will force the two curves to combine together. Once they're in line, I'll just make sure that I'm dealing with curvature continuity. That will ensure it's seamless. I won't bother joining it yet, because I want to do the same on both sides. So I'll do a match again. Top gets matched to the bottom. I'm not doing it the other way around, because it might compromise my ring size. Once the top and bottom are joined together, well, or aligned together, rather, I'll then select the two and join them. It'll say it'll become one closed curve. That means you've done it right. Now, if I were to try and create profiles on the shape with a profile placer, the result would be something a little bit uh, breaked, broken and uh, uneven on either side here. So what I would like to do instead is I'd like to smooth out this curve before I use it. I'll do so with the rebuild command. Now, a good starting point for the rebuild, it's going to redraw the line with as many points as I put in this new number here. This is my old number of points. If I pick the same number, you'll be able to see just exactly how much difference it makes. It's going to try and redraw the whole line with a certain number of points. So this will inevitably become smoother. 
but that's exactly what we want. Okay, so I'll just keep that at the same number of points to give me a nice smoother line. And then we can work with that. For my next step, what I'll need to do is I'll need to add some profiles onto this line. We're going to actually use a command called sweep one rail with history to generate a, a solid surface based upon this curve. But we'll need some more cross sections to tell the sweep exactly what we're making. So we go to the tools menu and go to the profile placer command. Bring this up. And once again, this builder over here requires information from us to be able to put in. So I'm going to grab this line and I'm going to input it with this up arrow into the curve menu here. The result will be a yellow shape which I can freely move, which is the shape of my profile. I'll position it one at the bottom here. I can control its width and height freely. If you want to keep it more precisely, you can hold down shift. And I think we'll aim for something like two and a half wide by, or two and a half high by three wide should be fine. If you're having trouble getting the exact number you want, you can always zoom in. So I have that. Maybe pick a more square shape as well, just for kicks. Just click on that shape to change its dimension and shape. Now to add a second profile, we'll click on Add. And then I can leave one in this original position, which I can then reposition to the top here. I'm aiming to get it right in the middle, which might require moving your profiles and your position of view around until you get what you want. Now we'll change the height accordingly. Make it wide enough to hold the stone and narrow it out a bit. And once we have that, we can press enter to finish, and that gives us our shape. Next thing to do would be to actually sweep it. So we use surface, sweep one with history, select our rail first, that's the path our profiles are following, then we'll select our profiles in order. So I press enter when done, it gives me a solid shape in the shape of my ring itself. So that gives us one half of the ring. For the other half of the ring, what I'll be doing is I can take the shape and I can either mirror it, or I can use a command specially designed for handling this sort of situation and creating mirroring and joining. It's in the cutters menu, it's a builder called Quad Flip. I can bring this up, and it gives me a choice of which quadrant in the looking down view I want to keep. So if I want to keep the upper left corner, I make sure the upper left corner is selected, and the piece is selected, and simply hit Apply. Now we'll trim away everything except what's in the upper left corner, leaving me with the shape of the ring I want. Now all I will have to do from here is simply rejoin the shapes together just by selecting the four and using the join command. The reason why we do that is because this creates incomplete and open shapes. So we need to join them together to make them closed again. It's one of the side effects of working with a surface modeler. Finally, our finishing touch, I'll grab the stone, and I will use the setting menu to use the bezel builder here, and I will put in the stone in here to create my setting. I can move it up and down as I like, raising and lower it as needed, until I get the setting I want. Now if I wanted to, I could also move that stone up and down as well, and the setting will follow. So that's the basic idea of the custom ring rail builder. But as you can see, this is a starting point for doing many different, more advanced shapes and variations. For more information on the Matrix 3D CAD course or other courses here at Holtz Academy, visit holtzacademy.com.